Hello everyone, welcome to That's Football. Liverpool beat Leeds 6-1 and open up the debate of whether top four is possible for Liverpool this season. I can hear you saying, no way, Goldbridge, you're talking nonsense. It wouldn't be the first time, but listen to this. Jurgen Klopp was non-committal. He set a challenge to his players to go out there and keep the momentum. Even if it's just into next season and they can build again, he wants that momentum. It's out of his hands. He said, look, if teams of others win every game, we can't catch them but it's down to us. But I'll say this right at the start. Liverpool have got 57, uh, 47 points. Um, if they win their last eight games, which is 24 points, they'll have 71. 71 points will get them top four. That's how I'd look at it if I was Liverpool. If you win all your games, you will get top four. Because looking at you played the same games as Newcastle and they're nine points ahead... Newcastle have got to go to Goodison Park. Newcastle have got to play Arsenal. Newcastle have got to play Spurs. Newcastle have got... Basically, Newcastle, with 50, 56 points, need 15 points, don't they? They need 15 points to get to 71. That's five wins from eight. That might happen. It might not happen. Liverpool win eight out of eight. They've got 71. Look at Liverpool's fixtures. This is the big thing. Forest at home, win. West Ham away, you'd expect to win. Spurs at home, you'd expect to win. Fulham, Brentford, Villa at home, all very difficult, but it's at Anfield. Leicester away, win. Southampton away, win. So look, this ain't the Liverpool of the last few years where you'd say they probably will win all eight. All eight. It's Liverpool. But if they find a bit of form and they find a bit of rhythm and they find a bit of momentum, it would be remarkable, remarkable. it would be incredible and it's probably not going to happen but it's not over yet. And I think that um, Liverpool have struggled for consistency all season. I mean, they've lost to people like Bournemouth, so they could lose to bloody Southampton away. Of course they could. It's very unlikely Liverpool will get top four, but you can sort of see that in this most of remarkable seasons, actually, it might not be impossible because, look, there's big games. I mean, I, I, I actually would say that as brilliant as Brighton have been, Brighton have got a really tough run in. They've got to play United. They've got to play Arsenal. I think they've got to play Villa. I can see Liverpool actually finishing above Brighton, but can they get into the top four? Ultimately, it, if Liverpool can get into a rhythm, I think it comes down to Liverpool and Newcastle with Tottenham and Brighton not quite having the stamina to go the full distance. But it just shows you how Liverpool have messed up this season. You know, we're speaking quite positively about Liverpool after a positive result. But it does show you, and I think Jurgen Klopp described it himself as a bad season, the fact that they still have an outside chance for top four and the, and, and the, the amount of bad results they've had. I mean, my club, Man United, we've benefited from this. I look at the top four race and I go, you know what? If Liverpool and Chelsea hadn't had such a bad season, it would be a harder race for top four this year. I'm not saying it's not a hard race anyway. It's been a fantastic season, but... Liverpool have had a, a horrific season and yet they, they still have this outside chance that if they could find any semblance of form, they would be in it. So what do you think? Do you think Liverpool can do this? I, I, I basically just put it down to this. I put it down to the fact that if they can win eight games, they will get top four. But if you draw any of them, you know, even if you win seven and draw one, that's 69 points. That might not be enough. You've got, from where Liverpool are, you've got to get 71 points. Um... The only way you can get 71 points is by winning all the games. If you draw one, you don't hit 70 points, so you get 69. That won't be enough. Some people like 69, but uh, we're not talking about that sort of thing, are we? So, massively intriguing, but I think the problem for Liverpool will be the home games against Fulham, Brentford, uh, Villa, I think, and, and maybe Spurs. Four tough games against teams that you know have got something to play for and will give them a game. But you know, certainly, I think the games against West Ham and Leicester and, and Forest and Southampton, that should be four wins. But, you know, they're, they're just so unpredictable, Liverpool, aren't they? Um, and last night they were fantastic. And I've always said this, haven't I? I don't think Gakpo's a flop. I don't think Nunez is a flop. Um, I don't think Salah's a bad player. I, I, I actually don't think the problem at Liverpool is their strikers. I think their problem is their midfield and their defence. And, um, you know, we've seen it with United over the years as well. We have got good attackers, but sometimes they're in a graveyard shift because they're just not getting the quality or possession in the final third because they can't get up the pitch. And, you know, that's been Liverpool's problem. But they'll have a bit of momentum now. And, and as Jurgen Klopp says, at the bare minimum, you want to be in a situation where you can take this momentum into the summer and into next season. Because I still think that people think not getting Champions League football is problematic. We spoke on the United stand this morning about Osman and where he will probably go and that club probably won't have Champions League football. Um, check it out on United stand if you didn't see it. But I, I also think Liverpool will still be able to 
you know, I mean, obviously Bellingham's off the table for a number of reasons, Champions League football price, but more importantly, you don't want to spend all your budget on one player when you need three or four. It's logical, but disappointing for Liverpool fans. But I still think you'll still be able to go to an Alexi McAllister, a Ryan Gravenberg. Um, you know, they still will be able to bring quality players in because most people would look at Liverpool and go, fantastic football club, fantastic manager. This is a blip. They won't. They'll, they'll be back. Fight, you know, they could be fighting for the title next year with no champion. I mean, the problem for Liverpool is if you go for Champions League football, you bloody better make sure you get it because you do not want to be in seventh. You do not want to be in that Conference League, Europa League. Look. Again, mentioning United, we're seasoned on the Europa League. You hate being in it, but when you're actually in it after Christmas, it's not too bad. It's a trophy. Um, it's a pathway into the Champions League. It's a pain to be there in September, but it's not too bad post-Christmas. But if Liverpool go for top four, they've really got to try and get it. And if they don't get it, they've got to make sure that they were bloody close to it because you don't want to go for it and then finish in seventh and get the Conference League. But interesting season. Get your comments in for Liverpool. Um, just quickly, wanted to mention on the managerial situation, very strong story coming in over the last 24 hours that Spurs want to hold talks with Luis Enrique. Now, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about Nagelsmann being the new manager of Spurs um, because he'd been sacked by Bayern Munich. Obviously, within that time, Chelsea sacked Potter. Um, Chelsea get what Chelsea wants, so Nagelsmann suddenly doesn't look very possible for Spurs. And obviously, Chelsea is a more attractive club than Spurs, uh, even if it's run like a circus. They do spend money, uh, a lot of money on players, and um, I think Nagelsmann would be foolish to choose Spurs over Chelsea. But... The good thing for Spurs is you might not have to go for Brendan Rodgers because if you can talk to Luis Enrique and he fancies it, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time Spurs have, have recruited a really good manager and wasted it. I think with Conte and Mourinho, you did waste it. You know, there's no point bringing in a manager of that calibre and then not giving them tools to succeed. And hence, that's why both managers ended up failing, I believe, and got frustrated. But Luis Enrique is a really good coach. If Tottenham could get hold of Luis Enrique, um, I think that would be a real... A real, a real coup. Um, and also for the Premier League, I mean, look, Ten Hag's at United, Klopp's at Liverpool, Pep's at um, Manchester City. You've got Arteta at Arsenal. Um, Eddie Howe's doing a great job at Newcastle. Thomas Frank at Brentford. Silver at Fulham. Um, De Zerbi at Brighton. Chelsea get Nagelsmann. Spurs get Luis Enrique. I mean, Sean Dyche, don't forget about me. You, well, you might not be in the Premier League, Sean. I will. I bloody will. If I have to drag and scream, I'll get us back. I'll fight it. Um, but, I, I, you know, it would be great for the Premier League to have Luis Enrique and the Gelsman coming into the league and not losing any of the other managers from other clubs. So keep your eye on that one. Um, where does Luis Enrique go next? Look, I'd be surprised if Spurs get Enrique and Chelsea get the Gelsman, but I think for the Premier League, it'd be fantastic. And I thought, also think it'd be good for those clubs. And the Premier League goes from strength to strength. So let's wait and see what happens with that. Um, don't forget, talking about Chelsea, Chelsea, Real Madrid at the bridge tonight. 2-0, you never know. It will take something miraculous on, on Chelsea's recent form, but you never know. Home advantage, we will be live tonight for an 8 o'clock kickoff on That's Football. Watch along. We've also got something really interactive to get involved with on the show. We always like to have a topic or two, really something exciting to get involved with tonight. Um, make sure you tune in for the watch along. Have a great day. Thanks everyone for watching. Get your comments in below. Can Liverpool get top four? What are your thoughts on Rike? Smash a like and subscribe. I'll speak to you soon.